Welcome back to Jesse Junction. I'm your host, MC Jesse. And thank you so much for subscribing on Jesse Junction. Thank you so much for keeping it Jesse Junction. And of course, you asked me to bring this particular guest. This is one of the most amazing TV hosts and radio hosts that I know. Actually, nowadays, she's international. She's here. The beautiful, wonderful, Joy Muthengi. Hi, Jesse. Hey, my dear. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Karibu kwenye Jesse Junction. Hey, you look good. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Where have you been? I've been around, man. Yeah? Around town. You've been in town? Yeah. <laughs> Corona inakupeleka na magani with this COVID. Where? Yeah. Hey, it's been a crazy, crazy year. Like, uh -huh. I can't, like, I, you know how we're, in January, we're dealing with January problems, and we're like, oh, I'm so broke. <laughs> like, yeah. like, give me those problems back. I'll take those ones back. Then the last couple of months, it's, it's been a lot. So, so you've been having a long January. Yeah, a very, very long one. Like, so <laughs> I'm ready for this year to be over. <laughs> oh, but you, you're you blessed, Bana Joy. Every time, like, you move from one, one job to another. The other day, uh, you you were working for a radio station. You mm -hmm. used to work for Capital FM mm -hmm. in 2009 to 2013, mm -hmm. there about. Mm -hmm. The show hits not homework. Yeah. Hey, by the a nice one. Thank you. Used to be on radio doing a big show. <laughs> yeah. Then from there, Ikiisha Ivi, you get another job. Yeah. You're there doing TV. From there, you get another one. Yeah. Kila mali, unatoka hii job, unenda hii. You know, God even now I'm sure people. there's somewhere you're working also. Yeah. Maybe I will just announce in a big way. Oh, yeah. You are blessed. Soon. How can you say uko <laughs> around? So what are you doing, Sai, Sai, Sai? Well, right now I'm focusing on radio still. I went back to Capital last year. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've been doing that. So I'm trying to get back into acting as well. Mm -hmm. So just shooting a few pilots here and there, things here and there. You know, just bubbling under, but mm -hmm. hopefully... All will be revealed soon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and of course, Najwa, very well that uh, talking of going back to act, acting, going back on radio, you used to act. Sam. Yeah, 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 I did. I, I did a few productions uh, earlier on in my career. I was on uh, Changing Times. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was on uh, another show called Prem. I did some movies for um, Mnet as well. So yeah, that was, that was, that was a good time. So, so we can call you an actor? I would like, That's what you yeah, love doing. I would, I would, I would enjoy it. It's just that uh, you know the industry currently in Kenya is not as lucrative, so it's not something that I can say I'm an actress and this is all I do. Like you have to, you know, find your revenue streams or you can find them. Yeah. And so, but it's something I definitely enjoy. Like I'm probably the happiest I ever am when I'm on set and I'm, you know, playing a character that brings me joy. Do you intend to take it further? Like you act in Kenya, then do you have dreams like? You go to the back to the U.S. and I'm start not Lupita. acting. There. <laughs> Lupita thing. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. I don't think I'll get it. For me, it's just something that brings me joy. Mm -hmm. um, it's never been something that I'm like, oh, I want to go to Hollywood. Although I did live in California for a while, and I thought I was going to be a star. It didn't work out that way, so <laughs> so I ended up back here. So, but no, I'm just happy if the opportunities come. You know, I'm always open. Yeah. You're talking of living in California. I did. People want to go to California. Yeah. But you lived there. Yeah. You lived in Hollywood. I did. <laughs> well, I lived in Orange County, which wasn't too far from Hollywood. But yeah, we would go to Hollywood for like parties and stuff. Like, yeah, so it wasn't too far. So you, you moved to the U.S. when you're two years old. Mm -hmm. Tell me about life, Yauka, and when you came back. See, I didn't know any difference. I didn't, I was two, so I didn't remember what life was like here. I yeah. remember now when we finally moved back with my family, is when I was like, ooh, Africa, like, you know, <laughs> like, ooh, trees, you know, like, so I didn't know any difference. The trees. Then, yeah, there are no I trees where you... I remember going to Machakos and seeing trees and being like, oh, wow, <laughs> like, I'm in Africa. But um, yeah, but life there was, it was, it was a happy time. My parents were going to school. Um, I'm the last of five, so my siblings kind of raised me in essence. Uh, yeah, but it was, it was So times. you schooled in the U.S.? Mm-hmm. From the U.S. back to actually, it's Machakos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then went back yeah. to college. Yeah. What did you study? Communications. Communications and business management. A double major. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and double I graduated major. with uh, honors. I was summa cum laude. I was, uh, you know, top of my class. What? Yeah. Graduated I enjoyed with honors. school very much. Like. 
there's few things I'm good at and school is one of them. Like I killed school. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it very much. In no fact, one, I would love no to go back to school. No wonder you're not a You know, you're not a kid. You're a kid. Do you know? No, no, no. How comes to you? You're a kid. Even Kizungu. Cool. So you're a kid. And you know, I, I didn't tell people that when I graduated, mm -hmm. uh, now that you're talking of... Uh, you did honors, you graduated in honors. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Oh, congrats. Look yeah. at you. I didn't know I this didn't about say. you. I didn't say. I tried to remain humble. <laughs> so, yeah. and you have never done anything to do with business. You decided yeah. to concentrate on one major, mm -hmm. communications, mm -hmm. even in your practice. Mm -hmm. Why is that? How comes you've that, never thought of I think the business management anything? aspect of it was kind of like a supporting role to what I wanted to do, which was, you know, ended up doing media. Uh, but I think just having a sense of, like a business sense in everything I do, because I'm my own manager, I'm my own everything. I don't really work with the team. Uh -huh. So all the decisions that I make are pretty much me. So it's, it's, it's helped me along, along my career. So it was more personal mm. for brand. Yeah. Joy Mudengi, yeah. not a particular yeah. corporate. Yeah. And it's working well like that. It's a, it has worked well for me. Yeah, so so see, far. then I hire you as my manager. Then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you can manage yourself, then you can do that to me. I don't know. I don't know. You're, you're a big brand. I don't know if I can <laughs> quite get there yet. <laughs> Big brand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you've never thought of uh, managing artists then? Mm -mm. From the experience I think of that, managing artists? That would yourself. be like a, a headache, a horrible headache. <laughs> Why is that? Artists are difficult people. Uh -huh. I've dealt with a lot of artists in my career. They're difficult and they're demanding and I don't have the time or the energy. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, let me tell you, if I grew up in California, Sidani mm. Ngerudi, I come back to Kenya to start acting. Uh, Nimeacha, the epitome of acting but you know, in the U.S. But you know, it's a lot more competitive there. You know, this is a, a, a smaller fish pond that we're dealing with. There uh -huh. you're dealing with a whole ocean of people who are much more talented, <laughs> much better looking, much more everything than you are. And so it's kind of, it's one of those needle in a haystack type of things. If you make it, then great. But if you don't, life was tough out there. I remember even in college, like, I was working three jobs. I was I was hustling. Like it's not easy to be an immigrant in the U.S. And I was not a citizen. I was born here, uh, but some of my siblings are citizens, uh, so it was easier for them to get work and stuff. But for me, it was challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you found this small fish was what you wanted. This worked better for me. It has worked well for me <laughs> for now. You know, you've in, as it contributed, like you being in the U.S. studying there. Has it contributed towards the kind of jobs you get here in the country? For example, working on hits, not homework, on uh, on radio, yeah. a station that is known to be like uh, for guys who speak <laughs> the niche speaking. market. Yeah, niche market. <laughs> yeah. Has it contributed towards that? I think in, in terms of my entry, mm -hmm. it worked very well because uh, I used to listen to Capital even when I was in the states, and I'd be like, okay, this is a station like I like. Um, and so just the, the atmosphere there, the climate there, it, it was much easier for me to, to get that entry point. So I think if I had started somewhere else, it would have been very difficult for me. But yeah. it was an easy transition. And it was, it was also easier for you to go on TV. Did you yeah. start uh, hosting TV from, from the show you were doing, Sugar and Spice? No. Uh -huh. I, my first TV show that I hosted was a dance show called Can You Dance? It used to air on KTS. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, that yeah, one. That one. That was my first. Oh, that uh, was TV a while show. ago. That was a, it was during Hits Not Homework time. Uh -huh. so I was doing it at the same time. No, I remember fun. that one. Then you look like a dog or something. <laughs> A very tiny girl. I'm not Kadogo anymore. <laughs> you are Kadogo, <laughs> but at that time, we were yeah, a tiny I one. I was very young, yeah. So you, I didn't know so anything that I was doing, but I was just winging it. And I remember it was a very tough job to get. I went for the audition. I auditioned, I think, three times for that role. Mm -hmm. And they kept turning me down because I, did, I wasn't a brand of it. They did. They were like, who's this random chick? Let's get, a, let's get MC Jesse. Let's get a name that people know. Yeah. And I, nobody knew me at the time, but eventually I convinced them. And I just kept showing up to their offices. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, get this job. So, Persistence. Yeah, yeah. And they just told you, you're here. Mm. But you are blessed after that. It's TV after mm. TV after TV. I actually remember in 2016, if I'm correct, when now you are, you are called to do Tasca Project Film Season 6. Oh, yeah, that was actually much earlier. I think that was 2014-ish. 2014, yeah. yes. Because I remember, I, I knew about that because you used to watch... 
uh, TPF it had Dr. Mitch mm -hmm. and uh, Sheila Mwaniga. Mm -hmm. And then now, an announcement came. For me, I saw it via tweet. You tweeted and said, feeling blessed, because we were waiting to see who are the guys that are going to host TPF this yeah, time around. Yeah. Then we saw, I saw Joy Mugbengi tweeted, feeling <laughs> blessed, excited. Yeah, it was very nerve-wracking, though. It was, yeah. It was big shoes to fill. And um, it's, a, it's a show that has probably the biggest audience of any show that I've ever done. Yes. So it was a, it was a lot, but I How took it in stride. How was that experience? It was crazy. I always call it my TV boot camp. That's when I learned how to do live TV because all, all the other shows I've done used to be just recorded stuff, even for Channel Low and everything we recorded. So this was live and you're being watched in six African countries by millions of people. The pressure of it is mm -hmm. like a pressure cooker. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I don't even know how else to describe it. So it was tough, especially in the beginning, because, you know, mm -hmm. Kenyans, if they don't know you, <laughs> they're like, who is this trying to be Sheila or whatever? So there was a lot of just social media, you know, hate and all of that. So I had to navigate a lot. Yeah. But I think for me, it was just about proving to people, like, get to know me. Like, yes. don't judge me before you know me. Just get yeah. to know me and, you know, here's who I am. <laughs> Did you get a backlash that time? Oh, yeah. In the beginning. I remember wanting to quit. <laughs> I remember doing my first live show. Yes. And I went home and cried on my bed for like an hour. Like I was just like, this is, mm -mm, this is not working. Like we've just from watching yeah. Joy Mutengi yeah. on TPF season I was, six. I was literally live in, in nine o'clock I was in that a gown on yes. my bed. I remember just the bawling my eyes out. Just like, this isn't going to work for me. Because, you know, I was reading a lot of social media at the time. And I don't mm -hmm. know, I had never been in a platform that big. So I wasn't expecting that much of a backlash. Mm -hmm. I was just happy to be there. But then the reason I stayed was because I thought of how far I had come and how much I had fought to get that role. Yeah. Because they auditioned a lot of people, a lot of names that were much bigger than mine, mm -hmm. you know, known to, uh, TV personalities. And I'm like, you know, if God got me here, there's a reason. So let me try and stick this thing out. In fact, I quit Twitter at the time yeah. <laughs> for, for like a couple, a couple of weeks. I was just like, let me just not focus on that. Let me just focus on having a good time and doing my job. But you cried that night. What made but, you go back again and do the next the next episode the following week? Now Kendalea no Kendalea. I think it was God, honestly, because mm -hmm. his comfort was 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 everything that I needed. And like I'm saying, like I, I thought about like, man, I've come so far. Like I can't quit now. Like let me just let me just keep at it. Let me keep at it and get to you know have these people get to know me and because i had so much support from uh, the team of the show everybody who was uh, producing it and them all everyone loved me there mm -hmm. so i'm like if these people like me then everybody else will get to like me eventually <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and they eventually did eventually like they you. did and i think dr mitch was like one of the best co-hosts i've ever had he was so supportive and he was like holding the hand through the whole thing yeah. He's a veteran, obviously, had done this so many times. And, yeah, he really was encouraging. I, 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 I always thank him for that. Dr. Mitch mm -hmm. from Uganda. Yes. The chief <laughs> from Kabaragara. <laughs> yeah. <That's> the <laughs> By the way, is Dr. Mitch a real doctor? No, I don't think I don't he's a real think doctor. He's, a real doctor. <laughs> he's, just, he's, he's just a name, just like a... Dr. Mitch. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. There are many doctors. I don't even in the comedy industry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I don't think Dr. Mitch yeah, is a real doctor. Yeah. But it was, he, he gave him motivation to oh, do the completely. show. Did you talk, besides Dr. Mitch and the team from Indemol, did you talk to uh, to any other person? My family. <laughs> your, your bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah those ones. Person? I would talk to them every day. And they, they were also a huge encouraging force in that, like, you know, it's going to be okay. Like, just mm -hmm. keep going, keep going. Keep doing you. You know you're amazing. So just show people that amazing side of you and they'll like you. So yeah, <laughs> they were very helpful. We'll be back in a few. <laughs> so is that the only time you encountered cyberbullying? I'm oh shocked. no, uh, good Lord. Okay, on that level, yes. Um, when I was starting his not homework, also big shoes to fill. I've filled a lot of shoes in this industry. I feel like that's my purpose in life. <laughs> Feeling shoes. shoes. <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, when I started his not homework on Capital, Yves D'Souza had been doing it for like 10 years. Yes. So here I come, I'm a nobody, just a random person with an accent. And <laughs> like, ah. so yeah, that time I remember Facebook was big. It wasn't so much Twitter. 
But yeah, they hated on me for about six months. You love going to Shago Sana. Sana. It's my so happy most place. of the times, where do you hang out now? I, I just hang out on the farm. My mom has a farm out there. So I just hang out in on the Machacos. farm. In Machacos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and tend to the animals tend to the <laughs> <laughs> and the produce. <laughs> the avocado. Like like the avocado sana. My mom has this tree of avocados, the best avocados you've ever tasted in your life. But they only come around once a year. And you speak Kamba? Fluently. My cow is better than my swa by far. Kawe. <laughs> Like you switch from Yeah, yeah we can yeah, yeah, do yeah, yeah. this girl. We can do this girl. We can do this no, I still speak to my parents. Ah, uh -uh, keep oh. my guy. <laughs> I didn't know where we're switching. I know, I know. So I wanted to switch your kizungu to <laughs> kikamba. Yeah. So he grew up in the state, and your mom is the namadhe kalata. Yeah, I see him up on one and say, I keep coming on three days, and I guess going good. You're learning about me, Jesse. You're learning. It's good. Imagine. <laughs> So, so your mom, your mom is the one who taught you Kikamba. Mkiu mm. about the US. Mm. She's the closest of your uh, family members. Uh, yeah. So it was Kamba throughout, throughout. <laughs> I'm gonna do this now. <laughs> imagine mkiu kwa njumba vile luko nambia. Ma'am, I don't want to do that. Tundu ni kale teba haki bela ni nundu. What you calling me for? Cause mama want to go to California and endo. Diba yo suna hakti. That's how I'm going to You're such a fool. But it was great because I remember, <laughs> like when I went back for college, my sister was living in Washington, D.C. And so I would go visit her uh -huh. um, sometimes during the summers. And we would, now, now that's where the cow comes in. Cause now we'd be at the store, like talking about somebody. Uh -huh. And we're like, we don't know if they know Soa, but cow, nobody knows cow. Akuna Wakamba, yes, obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're just saying <laughs> everyone. I'm doing the Wakamba Wakwanza when the US. So, when you talk of this, because <laughs> Wakamba, you, you know where Kambas are mostly? Where? Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Oh, no. Yeah, and Botswana. Hapa Botswana. Botswana. Me, boom, Botswana, me, Botswana, me, boom, Botswana. What are they doing? In Mozambique. In Mozambique, in Zimbabwe. No, you know those are dry areas, so you can imagine where else they would have. Stop with the dry jokes. <laughs> There's water in Machakos, okay? We have a borehole. We're fine. We even sell water to the community, okay? Okay. <laughs> There's a bell on oh. my mom's farm. So when someone comes to buy water, they ring the bell. Hey, Muti, that's your guy. Your guy. Your guy. Your guy. Your guy. News are mad. I'm happy to have you. Come on. Eh? Huh? Eh? Hey. Like, you can go far enough. Yes. I'm not going to. You just have to go far enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, there are not many boroughs in Kamba. I know. So you prefer going this way, <laughs> after magic, than going down. <laughs> so, who can you keep in the Bali Sana? That's where you are. Sana, I'm going to go to Chimba. Was it surprising? Umetoka US kuna majim na piga shower na swim. And yeah. then he came back ukambani ukapata ya. Yeah. <laughs> Showering with a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> Ulifa ya iwa machako. Shags, yeah. No, you know, in Kitui probably, like, when you would go to shags, shags. You know, yes. shags, shags. Then. Kitui sasa. Yeah, who was the... Now, Kushtuka culture shocks. I ain't gonna do this. You know, when you're, when, you're young, <laughs> when you're young, everything's an adventure. You know, when you're a kid, it's just like, oh, this is so different. I like this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you tell me to go shower in a bucket. That's a whole other thing. When I was asking whether I take you to Meru Menyambia, 
nikakuza uh, whether kuna mtu atamiliza ukanembea nobody <laughs> like you're not seeing anyone nope <clears throat> a decision <laughs> or something happened to you that you decided i'm not going to date again anytime i think soon. i've been in some terrible relationships to be honest and so that's just made me kind of retreat <laughs> retreat and be like as long as i'm by myself nobody can take advantage of me or hurt me so i think that's just kind of my mindset <laughs> do you like to talk about it um i mean i don't know what there is to talk about i just you know the, just life happened and i was like oh okay there was only one person i remember that i was ever like if i'm ever gonna marry somebody this is the person and i just took too long because i was focusing on my career <laughs> I took too long and he moved, moved on. He's not happy to be married. But, um, and I think after that happened, I was like, whew, okay. Were you in a long distance relationship? Yes. Yeah. Like I met him in high school. So uh -huh. it was one of those like right this time, right place. He was even gonna, he was out of the country because um, we were both in the States and then um, his family was here in Kenya. And so he was working in Sudan. He was all over the place. Um, at some point he said, look, I'm gonna move back. I'm going to buy a house. Like, this is it. And me, I'm like, I don't want to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be this girl yeah. chasing your I was small, like, me, I have to pick a citizen. You know, I have to <clears> get <throat> to when I get there. Like, that used to always be, like, my long-term, like, I know I've made it. When I get to where Julie Gishore used to be, ah, yes. I mean, I'm done. Yes. So I was like, chill, man. <laughs> <laughs> when God, yeah. when God, yeah. Let me achieve this part. Yes, what achievements when you're by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I can't come your way, but see, you go so yeah, on we just TV. Kind of, yeah. I ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. Yeah, he moved to a different country. I found out he was married on Facebook. <laughs> I just saw wedding photos. I was like, okay. <laughs> and it hurt you. Oh, yeah, very much. And I think like everyone else I've dated since then, I don't take people very seriously because I'm kind of like, you're just like a placeholder, really. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you're not you're not 100% what I want, but I'll take it for now. So, yeah, that hasn't worked out very well. <laughs> In a... fact, I'm trying, I'm thinking of online dating now. <laughs> I am, Jesse. Niambia ni platform gani unaenda ni rushe picha zangu hapo. Are you on Tinder? Oh, oh, I am downloading the app. Tonight, I Tinder. I mean, you never know. Huh? Like, what's, what's stopping me? You know, I've dated in this Nairobi and it's just a mess. So, there was a time I saw you talking so much about depression online mm. and even uh, and mental wellness. Mm. Is it that particular relationship that Unasema it really hurt you that made you get into sort of... Uh, oh, no. Unstable? This was way before. Um, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed at 14 <clears throat> with clinical depression and anxiety. And I was on medication for quite a while. Um, and so I think for me, it's always like transition based, like like me going to a new school or me starting a new thing. Like that's sort of where I see all of it kind of popping up. But I've been very fortunate in that I've been able to manage it as well as I can with the what, help of... What caused, what caused it? Mm, <laughs> I'm not going to say moving back to Kenya, but it's kind of related. I was just very, like, I was a fish out of water. I didn't know this whole world, mm -hmm. you know? And my parents, I remember, they kept taking me, trying to take me to schools in Machakos and Sijiwats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just like, nope, I'd run away. Like, I was like, nah, this isn't, this isn't working for me. And so I think all of that, and finally just getting into a place where I could feel comfortable, because um, I did change schools a lot. By the time I ended up in uh, Rafeli Academy, I felt that was now my grounding point. But everything before that was kind of like a mess. I always <coughs> felt like this isn't my life. I, I don't belong here. So I think it was a lot of that. It caused you to mm -hmm. even want to commit suicide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it got bad at some point, you know. Um, and that's why I look back on my journey and I'm just so proud of myself. And even when I'm going through tough times right now, I look back and I say, well, you went through this and you managed. So you're going to get right if you need to go back to therapy if you need to talk to a psychiatrist if you need to get on medication like you do what you need to do to make yourself whole do you feel like you have come out of that uh i don't think there's ever any coming out of it's mm -hmm. it's it's a disease so it's something that you deal with you know probably for the rest of your life but it's just about managing it and knowing your triggers and avoiding situations that make you feel a certain way so it's about managing that i think um 
we're talking about dating and I think I've had a hard time in that aspect that sometimes people that I'm dating won't understand that part of my life. And I'm just like, hey, people have diabetes. <laughs> this is what I have, <laughs> you know? So as long as I'm open about it and I'm able to share, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, you, you just mentioned about dating and also when you look at what you've been able to overcome, I'm managing depression and mental wellness. Mm -hmm it plays a role does it play a role in the person that maybe you might be looking forward to dating and that's the thing that's what i'm saying like it, it's it's very difficult to find somebody who understands that world if you've never been in it or have a loved one or a family member who's gone through it so yeah that does play a big role in that i you know when people are starting to get to know me they think they're getting to know Dre Motengi, and i'm like that's not me Whatever you think, I'm not a billboard. <laughs> like, I am I am more than that. So if you're really, really invested in getting to know me and the real me and what I actually like to do and um, things like that, then then that's fine. But don't come here looking for Joy Mutengi. She doesn't live here. <laughs> she lives there. She's a whole there. different yeah, person she lives on inside TV. here. <laughs> uh, an easy person. Yeah. So what's your kind of Mr. Right? Do you have this person then that you know... <laughs> This man, a red plate. Do you have this man that now, you know, this is my Mr. Right? I'm a, I think I these are to. my uh, this is come had a fit up. Uh, no. Then then the hapa. Like any, no, I, is... I think I used to have that list, but I've lived long enough. You know, the older you get, you start <laughs> dropping those two things. You know, like, you start dropping all of that because you realize, even I've dated those people who are on that list and those things, it doesn't translate into, you know, a happy relationship necessarily. So for me, it's just really somebody who wants to understand the real me, somebody who's caring, somebody who loves God. Um, and somebody who's driven. Yeah. I can't miss the right particular one. Because uh -uh. the, the description you're giving is just a general man. Yeah. Nimse tu. Nimse tu. Ata wewe. Hey! My God is good. Ha! Hata mi ningependa tuachi hapa ata nita vimeisha. Eh? Ata mimi. Gara garia. I think. You know, I've been wondering... Talking of Pia Mimi, you know, kuna vile, nowadays I, I find myself kind of talking this kind of oh, English, on, yeah. you know, and I find myself uh, watching a lot of American stuff, you know, and I find myself also that, that I, 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 I kind of like this color, nah, man. you know, you know, nah. you know I, don't, I don't get it. God is speaking. Nah. God is See, talking that's not something. You. Yeah? I don't like the fake. Oh. Just be yourself. Be MC Jesse from Meru. Like, that's the person I'm looking for. Who's themselves holy. And it's not defined by a job or this or that. Just chill. Unataka ule njama. Uyo. Mokoro. Nchamba. Njoli nchake ya nyewe. Mokoro. Kuma aja ojo atena nteto. Eh? Unu oku enda. Ule enda ki njama. Yani kiki. Kiki lija ama tuuma aja ojo Nairobi ki. Kiki ya ya anto story. Yeah, I want like a guy of shags. Mimi ni wa shags by the way. Mimi ala I don't belong to Nairobi. Mimi likuja Nairobi kutafuta. Mimi, mimi wa meru. I see how you just switched up. Zaza. Nimekuwa na, ah, now I give up na mambo ya America. I don't even want to go there. Tuka yapa. So ki meru ni ki ideal. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you, once you must talk America, Sasa Ukienda America, Uko Sawa. That's my ideal life. I just want to live on a farm and grow old. Wow, let me tell you, Meru, Meru, we have farms. Meru is amazing. Do you guys have horses? Because I want to own some horses. Before horses is like Mount Kenya, Uko Kwa, kwa Oteli. So tutaendanga hapo si mbali na area na iva, na nyuki hapo yes. na houses because yeah. the ones that we used to have tulizibebesha mizigo zikakuwa punda so <laughs> na zingine tulikula <laughs> eh eh na tukatengeneza samosa sasa hakuna house na tena kama ni house house unataka ya nini ya kukubeba 
Yeah. Mimi nitakubeba. <laughs> nitakubeba hata nitakubeba ujinga, nitakubeba uerevu, nitakubeba. You be my burden. <laughs> <laughs> so are you intending to continue with your acting now? Upper Kenya like uh, the, na, you used to sing kwanza nilikuwa nanga ukira. Used to rap. Used to rap. So do you intend to combine that uh, singing, I mean rapping? Nope. Acting? <laughs> yes. Radio? Maybe. And TV. Maybe. So of all those ni gani wewe prefer sana? I think they all have their advantages, right? Radio is fine and it's my it was my first love. So it's very something very comes naturally to me. It's very easy for me to do because I talk a lot. TV, there's a rush that you can't get with anything else. Mm-hmm. Like especially live TV, you know it. Yeah. Like that, that energy, you know. It's an, some it's adrenaline. Exactly. It's Something exhilarating. Yes. It's not easy, but it, the, I miss that aspect of, of, of doing TV. I've been off of TV for uh, like two years now. Two years. Yeah. And I, I have not felt that again with anything else I've done. Acting, I love. I would love to pursue that. But like I said, that's not something I can do on its own right now. You know, it's funny. I always get cast or asked to audition for roles that are like this, like, very evil, you know, character of like this woman who's just like maybe a gold digger, like something like that. And I'm always like. <laughs> yeah, like changing times. Yeah. Right? You yeah. are a gold digger. I was a full gold digger. I was married to an old man. <laughs> And, um, the, and in reality, uh, it's the opposite. You I know. I'm too. like, I don't know why I got cast for that role because I'd actually audition for a different role on that show. Now, now, to Budesco, to Tumze. Hakuna wale wenye washa ikuja kukutafuta based on, ah, huyu, kuna muze tuliona hako na yeye kwa TV, kwa hivyo hata mimi, I qualify. There are some. Politicians are notorious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why politicians like media chicks. Like every politician has a media chick. Like, yeah? Yeah, it's crazy. Once when I was on TV and, you know, because we used to do, you know, host politicians in the morning and stuff. And yes. There was one who kept calling me. <laughs> I was me. He kept calling me to the point I blocked him. Then he started WhatsApping me. I blocked him on WhatsApp. Then one day I'm just sitting at home and I'm seeing parliament, <laughs> true color. <laughs> I was like, no. Like, I can't. Now you I make it awkward because now I, we're going to host you again and now it's going to be all like, uh, <laughs> I don't, never dated a politician. So but even if you were married, you wouldn't in date me. a politician. That They're is not married. single. All of them are married. Yeah. Would you date a younger person then? Um, I prefer to date older. Just because I feel like those people have more life experience and can teach me a thing or two and are just more, you know, stable. Yeah, but there was a time I used to d- date all the young kids. I really liked those VSIU boys. <laughs> you are young, bad. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that, okay. that I think that was a phase. Because <laughs> one, I was dating many young men, and uh, one time I go to this guy's house, and his roommate opens the door, uh-huh. and his roommate was someone I was also dating at the time. I'm like, Ala, like, <laughs> ciao, we <laughs> So to after that, I was like, huh? Ushai did to Mkamba. Mkamba. Eh. Do you know what? Yeah. Well, he was half. He was mixed. Ah, pana. <laughs> we want a real one. Kienyeji. You know, I haven't dated Kienyeji. You now. ever? Nah. Wacha tu kwame na wameru. Sibyo? <laughs> Kwa sabu Mkamba mta... <laughs> kwame na wameru. But you know, the thing I, I fear about dating cows is like, it's such a small community, I feel like we'd be related somehow. Eh? Like... <laughs> Because I have, like, my grandfather had many wives. His father had, like, ten, you know. So every once if you go to Kitui, I'm related to every single person in that in that town where we live. Because of the wives. Yeah, that... everyone is a Mutengi. And we find each other sometimes online. Somebody, uh-huh. I'll take a picture with my cousin, and somebody will be like, oh, that's my kuzo. I'm like, so we're, cu- like, what? <laughs> the whole Kitui yeah. is, your, is, your, yeah. is your family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are coming back after the break na kikamba nisikie kama unajua Julie sema unajua ambe just junction right back after the break Ati what Jesse ja- don't go anywhere just junction like take a break Okay okay mikadi bando just junction is your kid after the break I know I can Oh you oh you you Jesse 
Joy Muthengi, if you have such a guest on your show, what would you do? Ata utafanya nini? Eh? Beautiful Joy Muthengi with a story. From US to Kambane. By the way, no, but kind of, mwah, kind of sumptuous. <laughs> she actually reminded me of an Amorite quote that says, if you are a kind of a man that dates many women without marrying any, Pharaoh, release the children of God. The be free. Thank you for watching Jesse Junction. See you next time. So far, so good.